So, Highbury Park, Highbury Fields. It's a, it's a great little park. There's, People always just hang out. Yeah, it's a classy little, really it's a classy lovely. little zone. Mm -hmm. We're trying to figure out what's the best move here as far as painting maybe the open grass of the park or trying to capture one of the neighborhood streets. So it's a matter of do we save it to painting two when the light is a little bit more directly overhead and do something like this. What I try to focus on is just kind of blocky shapes. So big solid block shape for the tree, for the for the different sections of grass. I really am trying to go for readability so when you step back it reads. That's the whole point of doing these small things. So the challenges of this one was greens, of course, and it started out with a bright blue sky and everything was really lit. Um, strong, strong light and shadow, and that changed almost immediately, kind of in and out. So it was trying to remember what the saturation was of the grass when the sun was still out, and also of the trees. And then I guess another challenge I have always is painting people and designing them. I think, I think that's the biggest thing with these city scenes, especially in London. There's so many people all the time and it takes design on where to put them, and I feel like that's one of my weakest points. Um, I certain, I rely on what I see, and so if they're not there, I have to kind of make it up. So I definitely wiped out um, my people a few times. Yeah, but otherwise, it was, I try to, it's very relaxing here, so I try to just kind of relax and calm down and have some fun. So I'm thinking about doing this ice cream truck. Um, I'm going to try and do pretty much this kind of whole little scene here with some people. Uh, it's I feel like this is a time to challenge myself and it would definitely be a challenge to paint people standing around an ice cream truck. I think that'd be really cool. I love the colors. So I'm just going to go for it. So we got tree in the foreground once again buildings in the background yet again. The buildings are going to be closer this time. They're dark brown uh, so that contrast with the windows which are white and they're picking up the sun really well right now and there's some cars. Over the moon. This is stunning. 
Is, is Tina the owner of the truck? Yeah. Yes. Oh. She's been here for over 10 years now. Oh, no way. 20 years. Yeah, oh, that's right. awesome. Because I, I, once I started painting it, I'm like, I know this truck sits here pretty much every day, so I don't, I'm not worried about it moving, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but 20 years? That's amazing. Oh, I have to write down her name so I can title it with that. Tina's Ice. Yeah. Tina's Ice, yeah. I've got the Instagram with her, but she's going to love it. Oh, Do you know yeah. No, of course not. So if you want to have non-stop company while you're painting, uh, especially from little children, situate yourself halfway between an ice cream truck and a children's playground. And if you want to make some new best friends, paint that ice cream truck and yeah. you're set. Yeah, that's it. All right, so we're heading to Clissel Park for our last two paintings in our small painting exercise. So we're excited to get some of our park in, possibly at sunset. We'll see how it goes. Sundown now, so there should be some nice light. Yeah. Yeah. Be fun. Yeah. Pretty right here. So if we're thinking about where the sun's gonna be. Our goal for these paintings are is basically to keep it short because we are now at we're seriously racing the sun because it's sunset time, so things are gonna be changing quickly. So we keep talking about this, and the plan is to just get the wash in there, get it close and then put just a little bit of opaque color where you need it and call it done. So this is what I mean by a wash, where my, my mixture is French ultramarine blue, transparent brown oxide, and Indian yellow, which makes basically like a dark mossy green. And so if I lay it on thick, it's almost as dark as black in the sense of black or brown. But then if I kind of let white through and push a little harder on my brush, you can kind of get the white of the canvas to pop through. So I haven't used any white mixtures opaque mixtures or white to my anything that I've mixed up here to get some of these lighter values. It's simply just kind of letting the paint either go on thick or thin. So I'm going to kind of leave those there for now, get the, get the tower in there, get the sky in there, and then just see what I need to add on top with a slightly opaque version of these to just hopefully just wrap it up quickly and then move on to the next.
All right, so here is where I left mine. Try to punch up the pink of the sky. You're not, you can't, I can't get it in the camera, but um, it's, uh, it's this really nice pink lavender sky. So that's what I tried to go for. Um, there's something about like evening lavender, on, especially because it's been really warm here. Mm -hmm. There's like those pinks and lavenders. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know. You just can't really, you can't beat them. This is why it's good to kind of work so small because you can solve these problems with a, just like one brush stroke. Right, get the idea out there, bam. So, it's fun.